So we have seen uh, sequence learning problems. Now we are interested in the question of how to model these, right? So we look at something known as recurrent neural networks. And our question that we are interested in is how do we model tasks which involve such sequences, okay? So here is the wish list that we have. Whatever model we will come up with should account for the dependence between inputs because that is a strong case that we have made that the output actually depends on multiple inputs and not just a single input. It should also account for variable number of inputs because a video could be 300 seconds, it could be 20 seconds, 25 seconds, a sentence could be of arbitrary length and so on. And it should also make sure that the function at each time step is the same, right? because at every time step we are trying to do the same activity, okay? So we will focus on each of these items from our wish list and then try to arrive at a model for dealing with such problems. So first let us ask this question, what is the function being executed at each time step? What is the function being executed at each time step? this should come after a delay. You have an input, your ability to go blank on me is just amazing actually. You have a hidden representation and then you have an output. The first time we are seeing this situation in the entire course where you have an input, a hidden representation and an output. What is the function being executed? Remember the output is always a function of the input. Lecture 2 or 3, I do not know, but definitely not lecture 14. So what is the function? Can you write yi as a function of x for my sake, if not for God's sake? You can. Okay, what is it? Okay, first tell me what is S1, US1, no nonlinearities, no bias, ditch all that. Plus bias, then no nonlinearity. Who cares about nonlinearities? Okay, and then what is y1? Okay, some output function. Okay, for some reason I have written sigma here. O, right? We just call the output function as O always. Maybe in this case sigma would work, but O is what I will call it, right? just to make the distinction clear. Okay? Is that fine? So this is the function being executed at this every time step. You can just write it using these two equations, which are seeing for the first time. Okay? And I is a time step. Since we want the same function to be executed at each time step, we should share the same network at every time step. That means, what do I mean by share the same network? Share the same parameters. Good. So this is the same as this because u, v and b and c are the same. Okay, so that is an easy way of taking care of the requirement that I want the same function to be executed at every time step. Okay? And this parameter also sharing also ensures that the network becomes agnostic to the length of the input because now whether I have a word which has 10 characters or 20 characters, it does not matter because at every time step I am going to execute the same function. That is why it is important that at every time step you have the same function. So since we are simply going to compute the same function, the number of time steps does not matter and we can just create multiple copies of this network that we have and for any arbitrary length n, we can still compute the output, okay? Still not quite there, we still need to take care of a lot of things but we are just slowly addressing each item from our wish list, okay? Now how do we account for dependence between inputs or rather actually the right way of asking this is how do we account for the case that the output actually depends on multiple inputs and not just the current input, okay? How do you account for that? Feed in the, okay, good. So let us first see an infeasible way of doing this, okay? So you are given the first time step x1. You have a network which predicts y1 from x1. You know at the same second time step, you also want to look at the previous inputs. So why not just feed it x1 and y x2 both and then try to predict y2. At the third time step, feed in x1, x2, x3 and predict y3 and so on forever. Is this fine? No, because already the word infeasible is there. So why is, so what is the problem with this? Yeah, good. So I am looking in terms of the conditions that we have on the wish list. Which condition does this violate? What is the function being executed at each time step? Okay, so let us see. The function being executed at every time step is different. So y1 is function of x1 y2 is a function of x1, comma x2. Remember that this is not just saying that you are passing two inputs, everything changes because you now you need to have u1 and u2. Here you need to have u1, u2, u3, right? So everything changes, it is not the same function. How many of you get this? It is a different function being executed at every time step. So now if I have a sequence of length 100, what happens? I need y100 which takes f x1 to x100 as inputs 
and has how many parameters? U1 to U100, right? You could you could share U1 to U99 for Y99 and Y100, but you still need those many of that, right? So the network is now sensitive to the length of the input, and as the length of the input goes, you'll have to construct more and more functions, right? And imagine that if at training time the maximum sequence length that you had seen was 25, and suddenly at test time you get a sentence which is of length 30 you do not even know how to compute that because you have not trained any parameters for doing that. So, then the final solution is actually to add a recurrent connection in the network. Why does this work? Okay, before that now can you tell me what is the function being executed at every time step? Assume there is a S 0 here. These are our S 1, S 2, S 3 up to S n and there is a S 0. Now, what is the function being executed at every time step? Can you write it down? If you, it would help if you think in terms of y2 and not in terms of y1. y1 is the boundary case, so a special case. So, think in terms of y2 or any other of the y's. And first think of what s2 is. From s2, y is straightforward. How many of you can write the function? So, si in general, uh, si is u into xi plus w into si minus 1 plus b. How many of you get this? Right? And then what is yi? Again, this has to be output function. Okay? But how does this solve our problem or does it take care of everything on the wish list? One the way we have written it in terms of i which is the time step definitely the same function is getting executed at every time step there is no doubt about that right. Modulo this boundary case of s 1 where we will assume that there is an s 0. Okay? So, the same function being executed at every time step. Can it deal with inputs of arbitrary length? Yes, as long as you ensure that the same function is executed it is fine. Does it ensure that the output is actually dependent on the previous inputs? How? Through si minus 1, right? So, that is an interesting thing that this guy actually depends on this guy, which depends on the previous input, and also on this guy, which in turn depends on the previous input. So, recursively, you can see that you depend on all the previous inputs that you had, okay? So, it is a very neat way of ensuring that your output depends on all the previous inputs and you do not blow away the parameters, blow up the parameters by sharing this recurrent connection. And that is this is a compact way of writing is that your y i is now a function of x i, s i and it has these parameters w, u, v and b and c. So, s i is called the state of the network at time step i and what you see here this just for the sake of completion this is known as a recurrent neural network because of this recurrent connection. And SI is the state of the network at time step i. So, as when you start working in deep learning and at least when you are dealing with sequence problems, state of RNN or state of LSTM or state of GRU is something that you will be hearing or reading often. So, this is what you mean by the state of the recurrent neural network. This is the current state which kind of encodes everything that has happened so far, right? It has an encoding of all the inputs that you had seen. So, the parameters of the network are w, u, and v, which are shared across time steps. I always forget the biases. And the same network is getting executed at every time step. So, I do not need to worry about whether I am computing y 1, y 2, y 3 or y 100, right. So, everyone agrees that this solution takes care of all the things that we had on our wish list. How many of you agree with that? And this is a more compact way of representing that, that you say that you compute S i and then you are feeding it back. So, this is just a more compact way of representing a recurrent neural network. So, let us now revisit the sequence learning problems that we had seen. So, now just correct each of these networks. What would happen? Each of these things I was thinking of all the inputs as independent. So, now what will I do? What is what is the only thing to be done? Just add the recurrent connection, right? So, once you add the recurrent connection, now you can go back and relate to all these problems that when I am trying to predict the character which appears after E, I also have the information of D and E. And same argument you can make for all the other examples that you have. When I am trying to predict this final state, I have the information of all the previous inputs here, okay? Mm -hmm.